today we're making falafel. So if you're not familiar with falafel, they are some little balls of uh, chickpeas. Uh, they're from the Middle East, full of nice little spices. It's delicious and it's healthy, of course, and it's quite simple to make as well. My name is Marie-France Garraud and you are on Healthy Cooking for Food Lovers. Let's get started with our falafel. It starts with chickpeas. And what you want to do is you want to use the dried version of chickpeas. They are just the raw uh, chickpeas, hard one, dried. Not the ones from the can, because if you use the canned chickpeas with this recipe, it will be too soft and it won't work to make your little uh, bone. So we must use the chickpeas and soak them. So how you do is first of all, you get your chickpeas and you rinse them with water a couple of times. It's gonna take one cup of chickpeas dry and you soak them overnight. So this recipe is quite simple and it's quite, it doesn't take a lot of time, but it's gonna spread over sometimes because we have some waiting time. So the chickpeas have to soak. What you need to do is to wash them first and then put it in a big bowl, something like that so big, uh, only the one cup, but you will see that they're gonna swell all and cover really with about two, three inch of water on top of the chickpeas and leave that for eight hours. We like to do that overnight because then it stays there and it's ready for the morning if we want to prepare our recipe. So here is uh, chickpeas after they are ready and I will show you so here is the difference. This is our dried chickpea and this is the one that was soaking for eight hours. See the difference? It's nearly tripled in size. You're gonna need to use the food processor for this recipe. So let's put our chickpeas. I end up with about two and a half cups here of uh, chickpeas. So in our food processor, we have our chickpeas. We have half an onion, it was quite a big onion, half an onion, about one cup if you prefer to measure. We have three cloves of garlic here. One, two, three. We're gonna add uh, parsley, a big bunch of parsley. There's lots of uh, flavor, as I said, in this recipe. So there's a big bunch of parsley here. Uh, but it's not that much. If it was chopped, it would give you about one, one cup. So I put that in the food processor. And then same amount of cilantro or uh, coriander. Uh, so here in the food processor. And to that, we will add our spices. We have one teaspoon of cardamom, one teaspoon of cumin, we have one teaspoon also of uh, salt and one teaspoon of pepper all in here and we're gonna just add this to our mixture and mix all that together. So we don't want to overdo the mixing but we need to be really all chopped evenly so I'm just gonna come and clear the side here and chop again a little bit wow it smells amazing really So we want this mixture to resemble uh, sand. We don't want to see any more pieces of chickpeas or little pieces of onion or anything. So we continue to mix until it's just like all sand. All right, now it is all chopped. And what we want is this type of texture here. It's a little bit sticking together, but uh, there's no more uh, big pieces. So we'll transfer into our bowl here. So this is our texture here. It sticks together a little bit, but that's what we want. It's perfect. 
So here I have two tablespoons of chickpea flour and half a teaspoon of baking powder. Now, if you don't have the chickpea flour, you can use another type of flour that will work perfectly as well. So we add this to our mix here and then we'll mix that together. So as you can see, it's quite simple and it takes no time except for the waiting time for the soaking, of course. And there's another little waiting time that's coming now. And um, believe me, those little steps are very important. Don't try to rush this because it won't work uh, too well. So what we want to do now with this dough is to form our little balls and we take like a tablespoon and I'm really pleased with the way that it uh, sticks together. But we need our uh, little chickpea balls to be quite tight. So just take the time to make them really firm as much as you can, because we don't want them to fall apart. And then there will be a waiting time before we cook them. We'll put the little balls like this on the plate and, and form all our little balls and then we'll wait a little bit, put them in the fridge for at least two hours before we uh, start cooking them. So therefore we make sure that they don't fall apart, they don't break when we cook them. This is our last one, them so they don't dry and send them in the fridge for a couple of hours. Now that our falafels have been uh, resting in the fridge for a couple of hours, it's time to cook them. And typically when you find falafels, they will be deep fry. And uh, so since I'm not such a fan of deep frying, I will bake them and it will give us pretty much the same results. Maybe the color is not all even the same exactly, but the taste will be exactly the same. So it's quite okay to uh, cook them in the oven. So we'll place them on a baking sheet and then I will put some oil first. Generous layer of oil here. So here it is, and then I will place my falafel here on the baking tray and then brush again generously on top of each one. I'm using here grapeseed oil. This is an oil that I love using. So this will go in the oven at 400 Fahrenheit, 200 Celsius, for about 20 minutes. And I will, halfway through, I will turn them around here, turn them around on the tray, and it will take all of 20 minutes in the oven. It's ready! A beautiful falafel. It smells amazing. And you see, so now the shapes are a little bit flattened because we cook them in the oven. If you deep fry, of course, you'll have your beautiful round balls, but the taste is exactly the same and the texture, everything is exactly the same. So I really like to do them in the oven. It's just easier, healthier and just the same. Now we have a little dip to go with it. This one is very simple. It's yogurt lemon, parsley, and garlic. Just mix together and it's a nice little dip to have with your falafel. Now, we can eat them in a sandwich, in a salad, uh, roll them in a pita bread with lots of uh, tomatoes and whatever you like, really. So let's have a look inside. So you'll have some um, nice, brown color around and then when we cut them inside it's all still all beautiful and green 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 and so delicious we can as we say smash them and put them in a sandwich that will be perfect or on your salad a little bit in that little just 
like the ones that I buy in the Middle East shop. Bon appétit!